Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be why she comes back but quickly flakes out again. I've got an email. This is from a guy. He says he's on the fourth read of 3% Man. I don't know how long he's been following me for, but he's got a story here about a girl that he knew. He met several years ago, and I guess he would go into the store where she worked. He was buying gifts for her. He admits he was a total bait and didn't know what he was doing back then. So he was buying her things, and he was texting with her 24-7, but he actually never went out on a date with her. And after, he didn't say how long, but after a period of time, he realized that this is just nonsense, and he was being punked, basically. And so he dipped on out. He said he, he, said he cut her loose. So recently, she reached out through Facebook and suggested that they get together. They made plans, and then the day of, she just flaked out without any remorse. And so he sends his text exchange of what happened. He wants to know if he handled things appropriately. And so what's interesting about these situations and what typically happens, especially like in this case where he was kind of like a male orbiter for a period of time, and the, the downside with this is that she formed an impression of him and what he was like in the past. And then you don't hear from a girl like this for a while. And then she shows back up at some point later with seemingly high interest. Typically, sometimes it is high interest and they're really ready or they're really into you or their interest creeped up on them. And other times, they're just looking for attention and validation, more than likely because the guy they were dating just broke up with them or ditched them or they went through a breakup or the guy they thought they were going to date that they really liked Blew, or blew them off and then they show back up they're all excited and then the other guy comes back in the picture and then they blow you off without any remorse and I, I believe that's what's happening here which is typical but when the th things like this do happen you want to make sure you handle it so it, sh so it shows and communicates that your time is valuable and you're not going to get jerked around so it brings up a uh kind of a quote or something that I wrote that's really important for this philosophy and how you want to interact because you want somebody that chooses you also, not somebody that's sitting on the fence, but somebody who would jump fences to be with you. They'll make the effort. They'll reciprocate effort. And way too many times, us guys, we, when we don't know any better, we're all focused on our own interest, but we ignore the fact that the woman's not reciprocating. And you got to give women the freedom to follow through on their commitments and plans with you or to flake out and disappear from your life forever. So keep that in mind when you make plans with women like this or just women in general. It's because you're really trying to determine, and I go in extensive detail in 3% Man, is she also into me? Is she going to make the mutual effort? Because at the end of the day, in a relationship, it takes both people that genuinely like each other and genuinely want to be there and make the effort to be there. And if you have a self-perception that you're not worthy or not good enough, you'll try extra hard and you'll give people the benefit of the doubt when they don't really deserve the benefit of the doubt. And you'll ignore red flags and you'll ignore the fact that they're not reciprocating. You always want to bottom line the actions. The actions tell you everything despite the flowery language and the sunshine that women often try to blow up a guy's ass to make him feel better when they're in the process of rejecting him. But the important thing is, is they still got rejected. So let's go through his email. He says, hey coach, first of all, I'd like to say thank you. I appreciate your videos and your books and I'm on the fourth read of your book, 3% Man, and I plan on reading it 10 to 15 times. I'll get right to it here. I used to talk to this Filipino girl years ago before your work, and I was a complete beta back then. I was texting her 24-7, bought her gifts at her store that she managed in fear of losing her, so it was a bribe for sex in a relationship. And how did that go? And we ain't even got on our first date. I was easily perturbed because I didn't get a good morning text when she did it consistently at first. So it sounds like she had interest but being too soft and being too beta like turned her off 
He says, I ran into her ex's arm. Oh, I wonder what that means. <laughs> Was there a physical altercation? If something like that happens, is, is the juice really worth the squeeze? I would say no. She tried to make me into a side dude, and I had to cut her off because although I was beta, I knew better. Oh, so she had a guy she was seeing and wanted to keep you on the side. So that right there, she's disqualified from ever being a girlfriend or indefinitely from ever being a wife. This is not somebody you become exclusive with. A chick that's going to want to have a side piece while she stays with her boyfriend or guy she's dating or in a relationship with, no. Fuck buddy, friends of benefits, sex playmate. Make sure you wear your raincoat if you're crazy enough to get involved with them. Fast forward to now. Since I've run into your work, I've had successful dates, and I did a complete 180 in my mindset with dating and women. I was able to choose if I wanted to go further or not with chicks. So this Filipino girl, I've attached her picture, and she's pretty hot. Got to admit, she's pretty hot. But this guy, he sent me a picture of himself. He's jacked. He's in great shape, too. So one from the past called me through Facebook Messenger out of the blue on my birthday saying, Hey, happy birthday. I didn't, you, I didn't know you and my mom had the same birthday. And he says in parentheses, she knew that I had already told her that back then. So I said, thank you. And she was like, so what are you doing for your birthday? I said, nothing too much. My best friend has taken me to see the new Doctor Strange movie, which was really cool. She says, oh, yeah, we single people don't do much for birthdays unless our friends call us up. We should hang out. So notice she's communicating, hey, I'm single. Hey, we should hang out. So she's suggesting the getting together. So he makes the plans. He says, so out thinking, I set a date. This was on Wednesday, May 4th. I set the date to Saturday, May 14th, which would be 10 days after setting the date, because it also gives her time to flake out or cancel for the last minute. Because again, you want to make sure she's really there because she really wants to see you. And so you spread it out 10 days like that. And if she's having a moment of weakness herself or the guy that she really liked or was dating, seems like he's going to disappear forever. What's she doing? She's calling all the guys she knows to get out on a date with somebody else. But in that 10 days, it's potentially the other guy comes back. And if the other guy comes back, what's going to happen? She's going to flake. She's going to go from being excited to not really caring one way or another. And this is how you help screen out and make sure that she's really into you for you and actually wants to go out on a date with you and is not just using you for attention and validation. He says, I was busy the previous Saturday, so it's, that's why I pushed it out 10 days. Again, I, that's a good thing because if you stretch it out further in the future, if she really likes you and has super high interest, she'll make the date. She'll make the plans. And if she doesn't, it makes it easy for her to flake out. And if a woman is inclined to flake out, I'd rather have her flake out. He says, she agreed enthusiastically. I didn't call her, text her like I used to. So the day of the date which was today, I sent a text a few hours before. Attached is the screenshot so you can read it. So he says, so based on that screenshot, I got stood up. She didn't communicate to me if she was going to be late or whatever, but so what? She was the one that hit me up, her loss. I consider myself a great catch. I'm a tall Afro Puerto Rican. I go to the gym. My pick is attached. Like I said, he's fucking jacked. Good job, dude. He's in great shape. I work in my career field in architectural designing for an elevator con company designing elevators, and I make a little over 50 grand a year. And I'm one of the co-authors in a book that's releasing in the fall. Me getting stood up, it sucked, but I wasn't perturbed. I was actually at peace because it was an opportunity to apply your work. Did I handle it correctly by doing the takeaway in that screenshot? And I'll go through his text exchange with her in a second. What should I have done differently? What should my actions be towards her from here on out? I'd really love your help. So I'm going to pull up the screenshot here. And so what he's doing is like the day of, he wants to push the date. They were supposed to meet at 6, so he's going to push it back to 6.30. And this is also a good test 
for women that you don't have a lot of rapport with, or like in this case, I don't know how long it had been, but she came back out of the blue and they hadn't talked for quite some period of time. But same thing, like women you met online, you really haven't talked to very much. You want to make sure they're actually going to be there. So if your date is at six, you can text them earlier that afternoon. And here's what he did and how he phrased it. He said, hey, you, I have a late Zoom meeting close to the time that we can meet. He says, hey, you, I have a late Zoom meeting close to the time. Can we meet at 6.30 instead of 6 p.m.? Does that work for you? So she says, let me double check. I have wedding inventory with a business partner. Let me check. He says, okay. So this was like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Remember, keep in mind, they're supposed to get together at originally 6. He's trying to push it back till 6.30. So it's 7, 11 p.m. Hey, sorry I'm running behind. I owe you. Our wedding is May 28th, and this bride is giving us the runaround. And so at, that was at 7, 11 p.m., so at 7, 37, you're good. We can do it some other time. <laughs> yeah, you're going to respond back with some other time. But at, the, at that point, it's past the time when they were supposed to meet. And so the fact that, it, that he's texting her, she says, let me check at 3, 10, and just leaves him hanging for like four hours, and then goes, oh, I'm not going to make it. That's just rude. And it just... At the end of the day, if you bottom line the actions, if you were a priority, she would have made sure she was available. I mean, she had 10 days. She blames it on the bride, but the reality is she just wasn't that into seeing you. And I would say if I was a betting man, more than likely it was because the guy that she was worried about it not working out, when she contacted you, things probably are going better with him. And so that's why she was like, eh. So back to our email. Never try to keep somebody that doesn't want to keep you. Always keep that in mind. He said, did I handle it correctly by doing the takeaway in that screenshot? I would say yes. What should I have done differently? I mean, there really wasn't much you could have done differently. I mean, it just sucks that she waited till literally an hour and a half after you guys were supposed to meet to say to tell you she wasn't going to meet it just shows she doesn't respect you or value you or your time and you know part of that is probably because of how you interacted with her in the past that she formed an opinion of you and so since she was able to waste your time in the past she didn't value your time because quite frankly you didn't value it you allowed her to waste it previously so you taught her that it's okay to waste your time but at the end of the day she's suggesting to get getting together you made a date and then she just blows you off so i would say if i was a bet man because again before she tried to make you into her side piece and more than likely that's kind of probably what was going on here there was somebody else that she really liked it didn't look like it was going to go well and so you were a backup plan for her basically and then her primary plans were looking good it was looking good with the other dude so she blows you off so if i if if I were you, I wouldn't do anything. I mean, you could make a date with her once again, and unless you just want to be able to hit it and quit it once. It's If she reaches out and brings up getting together, make a date. Hang out and have fun and hook up. I mean, you could try. Me personally, why waste your time? But I do understand from a guy's point of view, it would be nice to be able to, to hit it and quit it you're just gonna feel better about the situation because you'd like to get you'd like to get something in return for your troubles but if it was me i mean at this point in my life something like somebody like this came back with that kind of attitude is like i probably wouldn't even respond to any of their texts in the future because it's, it's just not worth it you should focus your time and energy on somebody who is excited to see you and somebody who wouldn't pull this crap on you the fact that she did just shows that she just doesn't respect you and doesn't value your time. And so therefore, if somebody doesn't respect you or value your time, they shouldn't give get any of your time. So if you got a question or challenge and you'd like to get my help, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. Mm-hmm.